Did you know that at some point, people thought that the only place you'd find this was in my museum? That ballistic ammo was a thing of the past? Well, the company we're talking about today single-handedly saved personal ballistic firearms for the entirety of the UEE. Join me as we talk about Gemini weapons. Welcome to the museum. This is a series where I break down the lore of items, vehicles, and ships in sci-fi universes. If you enjoy this, please like the video and be sure to leave any other questions you have in the comments below on your way out. Remember that the museum is supported by your generous donations on Patreon, so think of supporting us there to keep these coming. Today, we're going to talk about one of, if not the, most iconic ballistic manufacturers in the UEE, the arms maker, Gemini. We will cover the company's history as well as the many products available from them in the verse. Polly Delal was a runaway who escaped her alcoholic and abusive parents at a young age. She grew up on the streets of the dusty frontier city of New Junction, on low in the Corel system, with her partner, Clem. He was a bit of an engineer, and a fellow street rat she met early on after her escape. Clem was also the lone survivor of a family of Tavarin, who had fled the cultural purges at the end of the Second Tavarin War. The two lived in a shack, pulling petty crimes to make ends meet. You see, being a Tavarin in a human world, in the Mezer era, meant just being in public, he would attract a lot of attention. Thus, Polly would use Clem as a distraction while she was the one to pull the jobs. In these heists, Clem would often have to flee for his life, as just being a Tavarin was practically a death sentence. This reality drove Clem to obsess over his personal security, fearing not only for his own life, but for that of Polly's as well, as he knew if anyone discovered they were living together, her life would be in just as much danger. Clem's knack for engineering, coupled with his obsession for safety, drove him to build his first weapon, what would later be described as a ballistic hand cannon. Polly, who had a keen business sense, saw potential in the hand cannon as their ticket out of the slums. In the decades after the Second of Iron War, ballistic weapons had fallen out of favor. The long engagements from the last war had proved that lack of ammunition was a detriment in the battlefield. One publication even postulated that in the future, the only place to find ballistic ammunition would be in a museum. All matter of exotic firearms, firing lasers, plasma, distortion, electric, and chemical damage came to the forefront. There was, however, many who still preferred the solid grip and punching power of a reliable ballistic weapon. Polly had noticed a trend of many outlaws and bounty hunters going to markets and secondhand shops to acquire older ballistic weapons. That was where Clem's hand cannon would come in. On January 3rd, 2667, New Junction police were called out to a disturbance at a local bar, popular with off-world haulers. This was no typical barroom brawl in this Wild West town, however. The reports were that shots were fired from inside the bar. The police arrived to the loud, reverberating shots echoing from the bar and readied themselves for a shootout or to see the aftermath of something gone horribly awry. To their surprise, all they found was a crowd gathered around Polly, who was firing the weapon into a block of ballistic gelatin covered by heavy armor. Through smoking holes in the armor, they saw the shredded gel underneath, proving it to be the only victim in the shootout. The police quickly arrested her for violating the Armistice Zone laws and confiscated the weapon, Clem's hand cannon. When asked why she would fire live rounds from such a weapon in a public place, she replied with, to make some money. She quickly paid off her fine, retrieved her weapon, and returned to the bar to pick up a list from the bartender. On that list were the names of the patrons who had made a down payment for one of her homemade weapons the first official orders of Gemini weapons. Using the down payment from the bar orders, Polly and Clem acquired a shop and began making the first run of their weapons. 
Word of mouth about the effectiveness of these hand cannons spread fast, and Polly used this positive press to find investors to expand their operations. One of the first investors described Polly as direct and demanding, not taking no for an answer, saying, Polly essentially willed the company into existence. Polly made herself the face of the business, but not out of some sense of ego, but to protect Clem. She feared that if word got out that the weapons were being made by a Tavaran, that the orders would stop coming or even worse, the Mezer government would crack down on them. When pressed by outsiders of who was designing the weapons, she would cite Clem and call him her brother. If the curious pressed further, she would spin a tale that Clem suffered from a crippling social anxiety disorder. The cover-up extended even into the name of the company. She chose the name Gemini to play upon the idea that Clem and her were twins. This was an allusion to the ancient sign of the twins of Castor and Pollux, Gemini. It was also a nod to the fact that the twins were said to arrive in a moment of crisis to aid those who worshipped them. Although only manufactured and sold in Corel, the heightened stopping power of these weapons quickly got them clientele from all over the Empire, many making a pilgrimage to Corel just to purchase a Gemini weapon. After decades of steady growth, the company expanded with manufacturing plants in Idris and Terra. With this expansion, Polly picked the slogan the company still goes by today, the only line of defense you'll need. In 2751, Clem and Polly retired and turned over control of the company to hand-picked trusted executives who all swore to keep Clem's true identity a secret. It was only revealed that the co-founder and designer of what had become the public face of personal ballistic weapons of the UEE was a Tavaran in the early 29th century after the fall of the Mezers. This revelation was a shock to many, but far from damaging the public image, it put a progressive spin on what many had thought was an old-fashioned and bland company. It is even thought to have caused the record profits of the company in 2812. Though respecting Clem's vision and designs, the weapons have been upgraded with new manufacturing techniques and materials. However, recently, due to new competition in the market and sagging sales, the company's new owner, Cui Batiste, has started moving the company in new directions. Mr. Batiste made the controversial decision to branch out, moving the headquarters from Lowe and Corel to Artcorp in Stanton. He also bought out the energy weapon startup, Okta, to begin building Gemini energy weapons. He even changed their marketing to feature luxury yachts and professional athletes in an attempt to look more refined. All of this was to change the corporate image from that of a weapon for the everyman to the affluent adventurer. While a controversial step, the company continues to keep the sleek designs and affordable pricing that was key to Clem and Polly's vision for Gemini. Now, let's take a look at Clem's legacy in 2951. The LH-86 is a compact and powerful sidearm designed with a pistol grip for ease of control and a 13-round magazine. It is an effective option for a CQB sidearm with its 30-meter range. Though it lacks the armor penetration of offerings like the Coda from Castac Arms, it makes up for it in sheer volume of firepower. The LH-86 sports an impressive 400 rounds per minute capability. All of this is packaged at a low cost with the average of about 600 UEC, making it the most affordable pistol on the market today. The C-54 remains the favorite CQB weapon of security corporations and individual travelers alike. This SMG packs 50 10mm rounds per magazine and a blazing 1,100 RPM, making it the fastest firing SMG available. Despite being a bullet hose of a weapon, it's still fairly controllable, even at full auto. This is due to the pistol grip it shares with the LH-86, coupled with a lightweight polymer frame. On top of all of that, its range of 35 meters marks it as the SMG with the longest range available. It remains one of the best options for fast-firing, long-distance CQB solutions on the market today. However, the cost reflects that, with its price being just under 2,500 UEC making it the second most expensive SMG on the market today. Built with the same ergonomic design of the LH-86 and C-54, the S-71 assault rifle continues the Gemini tradition of long-range and fast-firing options with blistering 900 RPM, 
almost twice the fire rate of any other assault rifle. Built with a smaller caliber round than most traditional assault rifles, it lacks the punch of other ballistic models like the Bering P4. However, it makes up for its lack of stopping power with accuracy, making it the preferred mid-range weapon for private security forces, all at an average cost of 3,680 UEC, comparable to even its closest competitor. The R97 ballistic shotgun remains the closest to the original designs of Clem, retaining the unique underbarrel reload design first envisioned by the Tavaran. It has a semi-auto widespread mode for a large spread at 15 meter range and a focus mode for tighter shots at longer 35 meter range. It holds 10 rounds and has between 120 and 60 RPM. Its knockdown power alone in close quarters battle can turn the tide in tight confinements of spaceships or stations. All of this for an average price of less than 1,300 UEC makes the R97 an affordable and dangerous CQP option. The F-55 shares all the hallmarks of Clem's design with updated lighter materials and better ergonomics to allow for better control. Like all Gemini weapons, this light machine gun blows away its competition with its firing rate, topping out at 1,000 RPM with over 150 rounds per drum magazine. Nothing comes close in the sheer volume of rounds that the F-55 can put down range. However, at full auto, the F-55 is incredibly hard to keep steady. Many users complain that the climb being too sheer for them to handle and reducing the weapon's effectiveness in close quarters. Its range also puts it at a disadvantage. At 30 meters, it is a full 10 meters shorter than the easier to handle and longer range Demico by K&V. Its saving grace is its price a full 1,000 UEC cheaper than any other LMG available. Gemini weapons are as unique as their history. Sleek designs with high rate of fire and built at a low cost. It remains a solid choice for any adventurer in the black, though it still lacks the durability and flexibility of other manufacturers. However, if you want something that can put lead down range and won't break the bank, you could do worse than Gemini. Add to that the uniqueness of a Tavarin designed weapon made for humans is as much a talking point as it is a tool. And after all, if you're going to have to shoot something, you might as well look cool doing it. I want to thank you for watching this. I also want to thank my patrons on screen now for helping me make this content. If you enjoy this, consider becoming a patron yourself. Just $5 a month can get you early access to videos and even a long requested podcast version of these videos for easier listening while driving or while at work. Are you a fan of Gemini weapons? Interested in learning more about other weapons and equipment? Be sure to let me know what you think in the comments below. And as always, remember, ex historia ad astra.